Hey guys, so today we are going to talk a little bit about MTG Finance. I know it's been a while since we have talked about that topic. And today's topic will be why Magic cards have declined in value. Now, Mythics have existed for some time, but the use of putting all the value at the Mythic, I believe is hurting the game a lot. So the chance of getting any given mythic, so let's say Nicol Bolas in our booster box is 0.3. So we would need to buy half a case or more to get one Nicol Bolas. Should Nicol Bolas be in the deck, he's going to be a 4 of. So mythics, while they are flashy, they look good they really do hurt the game because the expected value spread is not good for casual players. It's much better for casual players to get cards that are semi-valuable and have a higher chance of getting those cards than what's currently happening today. So core 2019, the most expensive non-mythic is Aggressive Mammoth. And it's slightly above $4. Now, the price of a pack with tax, at least in Texas, is more expensive than any rare you can get in this set. That's not a good sign. That is not a good sign. Yes, we do have a Nicol Bolas Mythic at $35. But the majority of you will not be opening mythics in the random one or two packs a casual player buys. So the casual player is always going to get hosed. They don't open enough product. So this is something that it comes to a numbers game. So if I flip 10 coins, the chance of it being five heads, five tails, that's probably not that high. But if I flipped 100, it's a lot higher. If I put, flipped a thousand, the chance for it to be very as a percentage 50 50 is very high because I've done it at volume. The same with magic cards. If a store like Channel Fireball, Card Kingdom can open in volume, they heads the risk of having really bad cards because they are guaranteed to get enough nickel bullets they can sell and have profits and have margins. But stores that cannot open cases and pallets of this are going to be harmed. I want to talk about a set, Dominaria, where we have Teffy and we have Khan, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that is pretty much it. Now here, we do have a land cycle. Land cycles, in my opinion, are the most important because there's five of them, possibly 10, and if one of them is semi-valuable, the other four will be also semi-valuable. So we can look at this set and say, yes, they did a better job because they're land, but did the land they choose, were they good? And my answer here would be no. A lot of the value is going to the mythics. When we initially had the design of mythics, they were supposed to be special and uh, they felt special, because, but you didn't need four of them. So here, depending on where, where you buy the pack, you a boost a pack, there may be no rare that you pull, and of course I'm excluding foils, that will pay for the booster pack at retail. That's really important to understand, at retail. Trying to buy list one of these cards, maybe you get $2 if you're lucky, probably $1.50. And you might ask, Okay, great. So people are less likely to open packs. Shouldn't that have a shouldn't that help the price because supply is lower? Yes and no. So booster boxes, the supply of booster boxes are is extremely high. Uh, these things are very difficult to move right now. And here's another math. It just comes down to math. It's not politics, it's not gender equality, it's just math. If a store buys a booster box at $76 to $78, let's just take $78, and they crack the box open, 
they have to pay their employee, they have to ship it, they have to pay mailing, let's assume that they mail out cards, we, they would want a expected value of that box to at least be 90 to 100. But if the expected value of a box is $60, that's less than the distribution cost. Therefore, they would never open that box. And the players won't open it either because they're getting hosed all the time. And eventually they realize this. The majority of booster packs are opened by casual players. And the percentage of casual players who are going to get a really amazing card is very low because there's no rares over $4 for the most part. Now, let's talk about the supplemental product. And this is where we see a huge decline. This product was being sold at my local store for $34.99. Where is the value in this product? And the answer is there is no value. I have a one of these, which I purchased for $34.99, close to $40 of tax. I was really excited about it. And nada. This was a giant mistake of a product. The spell book. Right, the spell book that everyone is again, this does not include the foil. Some of these cards are really, really good. Um, you have a planeswalker Jace, you have a you know, you have Jace, the initial Jace counter spell and the Jace first Chandra, that was a twenty dollar card all day long, right after release. And now you have a similar version, but it's too much of it. So I'm going to make a longer finance video. I can pin this to two events that happen. Magic Origins and later on the return to Zendikar, but possibly Oath of the Gatewatch is the one that really tipped it over. Uh, these two events have caused the absolute decimation of Magic Card's value. And I can show you evidence. Uh, one of my best pieces of evidence about Magic Origin was Rudy, Alpha Investment, said that it was one of the best buys. And in one of his videos, I remember, he was showing how much that he had. Well, it turns out it was probably one of the worst boxes to buy in as a, quote, investment. And I was very optimistic about Magic Origins as well. I mean, there was many reasons that historically you look at that set and you say, oh, it's going to go be very valuable in the future, and it didn't pan out. Masters 25, remember this is about $10 a pack MSRP. Uh, if you're buying at 200, maybe it's like $8, uh, $7 a pack. So you do have Mythics and they are valuable. However, let's assume for math's sake that $10 is the price that you pay for a pack at your local game store. How many of the rares do you believe are over $10? Like, how many would you guess before we go to the next screen? It would amaze you because this is a, quote, highly valuable set, but the expected EV is so low on a $240 MSRP set that it will never, I mean, I like the set and I'm buying into Masters 25 right now, so I'll just tell you the truth about that but I'm the reason I'm buying into it is it's so low that it I mean it has nowhere but to go up right so you have port blood moon azula falia and pack of negation and then on the bottom end you have mystic snake the potential for someone a casual player to spend ten dollars at walmart and get a plague wind feels bad. So players are not feeling good about opening packs. Uh, people ask me why do I play Fire Emblem Heroes is because sometimes I feel good uh, when I get a good pull or it's gambling. It's the same feeling when you play slot machines at casinos or you play games that don't have any skill that rely on solely chance. There's not one more even the most skilled booster pack opener has no advantage over the unskilled, right? So there's this is a 100% percent 
game of chance. No skill involved. Opening booster packs I'm talking about and getting value. Uh, therefore, you know, the more booster packs you open, it doesn't mean that you are going to open better cards. It's interesting. Um, I've never seen magic cards so... I never expected the value to be so low on these packs uh, because there's lots of good things going for it uh, or good reprints like Crucible. But the expected value of these sets is hovering around $62 to $65. And Modern Masters is not doing much better. I think it's 140, 130. Sorry, not Modern Masters. Masters 25. Now, Modern Masters is doing well. And that was a combination of less supply. And the cards were just better. And people felt better about opening them. Um, you cannot, You cannot underestimate the power of a casual player. The casual player has the internet. They're not dumb. They can check up prices. And if they buy a $10 pack and they get a card that's less than a dollar, they're not going to buy that pack anymore. And the experienced player, the smart player, is going to buy singles from the outgo. So who's opening all these packs? It's the casual players. And that'll get to my hypothesis about the breaking point I absolutely believe was Magic Origins because that was a set highly touted, highly, I mean, that was a set that people said, buy a box, hold it for five years, and it'll be the next alliance. Or it'll be the next, it'll be the next great set, uh, the next Ravnica, original Ravnica. But it never came to be. When I look at RTR, that definitely was a point in time where things change. You can still buy RTR boxes for under 100 online. However, Magic Origins was, for many reasons, including the hype, including Frontier, which was happening at the time, including Jace Vinge Prodigy, the hottest card, a $100 Mythic, non-foil Mythic, wow. You had a belief that this could continue. And it hasn't done so. The other big step was Oath of the Gatewatch, where you had an expedition printed again. You had the expeditions again. Amaket rose in. It has four art lands, including foil ones and masterpieces, as they called them. So you had a chance for Battle for Zendikar, but mostly Oath of the Gatewatch to be incredibly valuable as a unopened product in the future, which it may still be, but they just did what they did in Amaket and our devastation, and they ruined the uniqueness. So there's no reason for people to say, oh, well, a masterpiece is unique. Uh, then they reprinted the masterpieces, if you would believe it, in the, what was it, the game day packs, the challenger packs, you could pull a masterpiece. So that told customers, uh, including my friend who purchased cases of this stuff, that, hey, it's not unique. And it's like when a snake bites you, you see the same colored snake, you're not going to, I guess, invest in that snake. Terrible analogy. Anyway, bye guys.